All right. Hello, everybody. I am Illegally Sam, and this is Rebel Transmute. I'm joined here today by... Snapkick. Hello. Happy to be here. All right. And for anybody who's never uh, seen this game, you know, if you somehow don't know every indie game ever released, I mean, come Shame. on, what are you doing? Uh, no, this is a indie Metroidvania game that launched back in March. And I think you'll pretty easily be able to see the kinds of games it's inspired by. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun little Metroidvania that you're going to be seeing here with us for the next hour or so. Should be a good time. Yeah, this was a very recent release. Uh, something me and Sam here both backed on Kickstarter. Yeah. 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 That's about yeah, it. yeah we, we were waiting for it for a while, and then we got it, and it's fun. So we're here, sure. we're here today to show it off. I think with all that said, we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to load up the file, and time will start once I clear this text box right here. Yeah, right here. So I will give a countdown and we can get going. All right. So we can start the timer in three, two, one. All right. Good luck. Thank you. And we skip the story like any good speedrun. As you should. <laughs> All right. So here we're starting things off. And as you can see, you know, 2 Dewey Metroidvania, we got a gun. Uh, and we are already start out with a slide here. So yes. right off the bat, we're moving. We're moving real fast. That slide hop is bread and butter of movement for a good chunk of the run. It's faster movement side to side, but it as a jump, it does not move you quite as high up to down as just jumping from neutral. Yep. And also, I've already collected a few things there. That uh, thing in the previous room that I collected was an upgrade that uh, is optional, but it's good for safety, where it'll let me uh, get more of that bar that's right below my health in the top left corner there. Well, the other thing I picked up was what that bar is used for. It lets me heal, a yep. la Hollow Knight. Yeah, it's called Spark Blood in this game. It can be used for some magic cast as well, but we won't be seeing that. In this case, we are going to be using it for healing entirely, and that uh, you get augments like picked in that first room, which are very similar to Hollow Knight's uh, badge system. We're only going to be getting a couple of those, but that one is just like right there at the start. It's super safe, so why not grab it? Yeah, yeah. it's like I, I even get it in regular runs, not even just marathon runs. So why not also get it in a marathon run? <laughs> exactly. All right, and here we get to see some combat. So yeah, this little arena right here is a little wave-based fight where you just got to clear all the enemy waves. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too huge, but it's a good showcase of the main weapon, which is a gun, but it's a very stubby, short-range burst attack that both generally knocks enemies back, but also has the ability to knock you back in both a pogo sense, but also just on the ground. You'll take a little bit of knockback. It's a very consistent knockback, and it's a, it's a bit much to learn, but... It's very, very, very good feeling once you have it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's once you get used to it, it's not that weird, but it does does take some getting used to. Mm. All right. Now we got to go pick up a fuse real quick to open a door. There's a few of these in the game, but this is the only one we're going to be getting here in any percent because, you know, it's any percent. You don't need any of that other stuff. Nah, who needs it? Yeah, like I said, this is any percent, so we're going to be skipping as much as we possibly can while still finishing the game quickly. So there are a few more optional upgrades that I will be picking up throughout the run, but those are uh, to increase my damage with both make that yeah, both makes things faster and also it makes it safer. While we're doing a little bit of run here, just to recap the story for anyone interested, basically we're playing a character named Moon, crash landed on this planet looking for her lost mother. Uh, and most of the game is just trying to reconnect with her mother. And that's basically the story, if you're curious. Yeah, so the, the gist of what we're going to be doing is we have to go collect a bunch of upgrades. And then the actual uh, plot relevant uh, progression is we have to go reactivate three subsystems around the planet here. And then when we reactivate the three subsystems, we can go to the area where our mom supposedly is. Right, Coming up on our first boss here. Uh, Sam's going to have to do a little bit of counting, so I'm going to talk Six, through this. Seven, eight, nine, uh, gray Matter, 
was in the original demo as well. It's a, you know, pretty standard boss. He does a couple of leaps at you, uh, does a big jump at you, a laser. Um, a glitch that I ended up finding during that demo is that at around currently 32-ish hits, um, the boss will transition into its second phase. Now, we can abuse this. If we get the boss to jump into a corner when it happens, which Sam is currently trying to bait out, sometimes the boss is not super cooperative in this. Um, there we go. Then, hey, there we go. There we go. Then so the yeah, boss will just happens. get stuck. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the boss is trying to transition to phase two, which is just a lot harder than phase one. So we just don't let it. We just don't let it. That was something that we found in the demo of the game back when its Kickstarter was running and was graciously left in in a in, in a sort of form. It was much easier in the, the demo, but as long as you put the boss in that bottom left corner for the transition, it still works, which is super cool. Yeah, so the, the developer for this game did leave in a few of the small uh, smaller speed tech things that we found in the demo that don't really affect the casual experience, which was pretty nice. Yeah. And that is one of them. The other thing is when you fall from a high distance, uh, the game puts you in a little bit of like landing lag. But if you were to dash the moment you land on the ground, uh, you actually can cancel that lag. And that was also found during the demo and was also kept in. Good stuff. So right there, uh, the giant flower is how we get our permanent upgrades. In that case, it's an upgrade to our blaster to let us destroy those purple blocks, which mostly is just used as a progression gate for that area. Um, later I'm abilities we'll be grabbing soon will be a little more noticeable. All right, Lincoln, you miss it, but I went very fast there and jumped over a gap I wasn't <laughs> supposed to. Uh, yeah. That is Corey Skip. So basically the gist of what I did there is if you hold bottom or bottom down and left on a d-pad or a keyboard uh you'll input both directions together and if you do that followed by jumping and barely landing on a ledge uh the game does some weird stuff after you slide and it just makes you gain all that speed i have no idea why it does that i just know that it works and it lets you make that jump way easier yeah we got a handful of things in the game where currently it's sort of just a i don't know why it does that but it sure does it's pretty neat <laughs> Yeah, so there there used to be a, a much more annoying way of doing that trick, which involved using the enemies on the other side, baiting them to fall off the ledge and then damage boosting up. Uh, but since the enemy location is kind of RNG based, uh, that was less reliable. So I'm very glad that we have this version now. Because if the enemies weren't in the right spot, you just kind of had to reload the room until they were. And it was very annoying. Not great. Coming up on the second boss here, Carapace is Pretty simple, once you know the pattern. Nothing too crazy. It goes to Sonic the Hedgehog mode. That's about it. <laughs> yes. Ah, dang it. Yeah, so basically, whenever he has the red particles about him, he's in this, like, jump and slam phase. And that lasts for long enough to get him to stagger and go into the ball again. And so the goal of the fight is basically just get him into that uh, attack pattern as quickly as possible, and then just keep doing that over and over again. Because if he's not in that red particle uh, jump and slam phase, he does a bunch of other attacks that are a lot more annoying and a lot harder to dodge. Yeah, funny enough, his rage mode, as it seems, is, tends to be the easier pattern to deal with. But there we go. Well done. All right. Also, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I am collecting a bit of money throughout the run here. And that is for one of the optional upgrades later. Because I need 150 uh, flux to get a blaster upgrade later. And I need an extra 100 to deal with another mechanic of the game, which we haven't seen yet, because I haven't died. But, yeah. but that mechanic is basically, if you die in this game, rather than losing money, you drop one of your health cores, which means that because I have four max health right now, I would go down to three max health until I get back to where I died and recover my health core. Uh, but an alternate way of getting that health core back is by spending uh, 50 uh, flux at a checkpoint and you just instantly get your health core back by doing that instead. So instead of, uh, you know, having to travel back to the area I just warped back from after dying, I can just spend 50 money and get my health core back instead. Exactly. So we want some money to be able to do that. 
for a little bit before we actually spend the money we want. And then from then on out, uh, ejecting a health core is actually one of your uh, augments. So we just take that out. And instead, when we die, we lose half of our money, but we keep our health. So we just stick with that. Yeah, this game lets you, uh, gives you basically like a full augment slot of stuff you can unequip that are like your basic abilities where one is uh, a compass for the gps essentially where you can open the map and see where you are one of them is you eject your health cores one of them is your hud and one of them is your ability to heal and so you can unequip any of those but the only two that are uh you know not useful for a speed run are the gps and uh the health cores so those are the only two that we unequip during the run yeah, speaking of, Sam just picked up a battery there a moment ago, which is more uh, room for uh, your uh, augments, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, so I, you start out with three augment slots, and that upgrades it to four. And so with all of the extra augments I pick up, that will let me equip all of them without having to uh, sacrifice any of them. Unfortunate space on those <laughs> platforms. Yeah, that was uh, very unfortunate. Just kind of that's the problem with this uh, next platforming section. Sometimes stuff's just it, not in good spots, and you just got to deal with it. Speaking of not in good spots, uh, these mosquitoes hate them. Don't like oh, yeah. them. They are very annoying. Thankfully, those little crawly dudes were in a good spot, so I could just go straight up on the left platform there a nice little bit of tech if you're like right up on a platform but just a little too low to actually land on it you can do an air dash and it sort of knocks you up onto it very very nice little thing there's a lot of nice little bits of movement throughout this run and then about halfway through which we're almost getting to is when the movement really starts to break open we also uh kind of glossed over it but i have an air dash now oh yeah <laughs> True, yeah, that's our yeah, same ability, just air dash, kind of is what it says on the, the tin. It's like the fact that you start with the slide kind of just makes the air dash a lot easier to just forget you got it, because it just feels natural. Yeah. Also, I'm opening a fast travel station here for later in the run, when I need to come back here briefly. But that is the only time we use a fast travel station, it's the one time we have to come back here later. All right, I'm moving through these areas. We're going into a room with high wind. This is a gimmick that's only in this one section, but. It, it, it sure is, and thank goodness for that. Yes. So it's, it's, it's like any kind of high wind thing in a game where it pushes you into one direction, but it's literally only that one room, so it's not too bad. <laughs> but now we're coming up on the next boss. Now we're coming up on the moth, which is a not super difficult boss, especially this first phase, because, you know, it's just a cocoon right now. So how do we deal with the cocoon that attacks downwards and to the side? Uh, you get on top of it. Here we go. And you'll see a couple attacks like that little tentacle bit pop out, which are mostly random where they appear. There's a bunch of holes that can pop up from, so pretty lucky that it popped up there. So Sam could quickly counter it. Unfortunate fall down, but only one hit left. I was like, so uh, yeah, it, it basically didn't matter. But yeah, now I have to deal with the moth itself. This thing, it's something. <laughs> this sniper it. moth is a, a menace. Yes. It's a fun fight, but it's it can be very annoying at times. It's uh, very much a DPS check as well, as we've recently been discovering just it is a cycle-based boss, so it goes through so many moves before it actually uh, just resets back up into the top. Not as much damage I would have liked. <laughs> as long as you're not dying. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so resets back up to the top, repeats the cycle. Uh, ideally, you can finish this boss in, like, two cycles, but you need a lot of damage to get that done. And this is going to be a little close. It's scaring me. <laughs> ah, dang it. Just missed it. It's probably like one or two hits away. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Ooh. Yeah, because these hits on the wings do do damage. So if this is enough to kill it, yep, that kills nice. it. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Good stuff. Yeah, so the fu funny thing about that boss is it's actually possible to have it change its attack pattern during the first cycle if you do enough damage. Uh, but nobody has been able to one cycle the boss quite yet because it basically turns the th it does three attacks in its first attack pattern and it does like two attacks in its second attack pattern. And so if you get to change its attack patterns in the middle of the first cycle, it does both in one go doing five attacks. But it's hard to do enough damage to even get that to happen in the first place, let alone kill it. So nobody's been able to one cycle it yet. Right there, two new mechanics come into play, one of which is the bombs. It's, you know, press Y, you shoot out a little bomb, it detonates after a bit. It's, it, you know, it, it is mostly what you think it is, but it has some more practical use, as we'll see later. But also, our favorite menu button, Force Respawn. It, it forces you to respawn. It is one of the greatest things <laughs> I've seen in a Metroidvania. It's fantastic. We end up in a situation where we want to go back to a spawn room. There it is, Force Respawn. Yeah, it's it's very good casually, both because it lets you cut down on backtracking if you're willing to take a death, and also if you unfortunately like find a soft lock or something like that, you can use it as well. Uh, but it's also just good in speed runs because that way we don't have to go bait out an enemy to kill us or something. We can just hit the menu button to go back. Exactly. It actually has a lot of practicality of the run. It's part of why Sam is collecting money. So you'll notice there when he respawned as well. Uh, went ahead and paid 50 flux to get his health core back. So don't need to retrace steps. Also, we're now using it to break all those little coral blocks. That you can see, you might notice Sam just shooting some bombs up in the air and platforms appeared because there were platforms up in those rooms just out of view. Uh, Through Metroidvania fashion, they're like, you go up top, you realize, oh, there's a platform here. I can use this to get back here quickly. Quickly. Exactly. Uh, they're, they're always there, so you can just use them whenever. Making our way through Jellyfish, uh, the unfortunate Jellyfish room. Uh, this is Jellyfish Fields. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They're not Metroids. Not Metroids, no. All right. Boss and this time. is definitely not the Queen Metroid. Bloat Specimen is definitely the first vibe check of the run. Uh, it becomes a lot nicer once you make the connection that, hey, you have bombs. They are also a weapon. It is literally a second source of DPS that is not limited to being five feet in front of you. Yes. Yeah, this marks the point where every boss fight will have me spamming both buttons all of the time. It is a tremendous DPS increase. I believe bombs are just like, uh, I, I forget how much damage they actually do, but I think they are like, about three times as much as just one laser blast by default. I want to say it's 1.5, but I'm not okay. positive about that. All I know is that even if it was literally one extra damage, the fact that it doesn't take any extra time to use makes it worth it. Exactly. So that was pretty clean. Good job. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh. No! <laughs> yeah, that's a soft lock. No! I did that by accident. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Should be able to. The game, will, right the game will just put me back where I was. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a fun one. If you slide and grab a one of those upgrades at the same time, you just sort of da 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 and slide away. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what that happened because I hit up on the D pad and the right trigger at the exact same time. It's very easy to not do as long as you are just not sliding when you grab one of these upgrades, but I did it by accident. But now we have the next upgrade, and now we can yeah. do this. <laughs> Woo! See, that, yeah, that is uh, not exactly 100% intended. No, so the balance, you'll notice, uh, w watch as Sam like bounces off of just enemies and such. And you see, it's not like that huge a bounce normally. That's like That's, that normally. Yeah. Exactly. That's what the bounce is supposed to be like. However, we have engineered a new way of using it. If you bounce and press jump, like, just a hair of a second after, the timing's pretty particular, you get what we call a super bounce. It is on demand as long as you're on ground 
uh, just straight up vertical movement. It goes super high. It's super, super consistent. It feels really good to pull off. And it was actually added unintentionally in an update because there was an update that adjusted the forgiveness mechanics. So that like when you walk off a platform, you can jump for like an extra split second. Uh, as a consequence of that, it added the super bounce to the game. We, we love when the developers patch in <laughs> the tricks. Oh, this is That's our favorite. These guys are Ooh. not being kind to me. Yeah, this room is not. <laughs> this room oh, they were really not kind together. to me. Ooh, no! Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's I can fine. work with this. Yeah, it's not too far away. So, uh, on top of the super bounce in of itself, one of the intended mechanics of the game is if you use the bounce onto a bomb that you yourself placed, you also end up going way higher. And these can also then be combined together like that. into a super bomb bounce. Kind of like that. Yeah, there we go. OK, so I'm going to be doing some on the route, uh, on the fly routing real quick to back up the fact that I died there. So I'm going to be going to get my upgrades a little early. So what I'm I'm doing here is I'm going to go get the blaster upgrade for 150 money. Oops. I don't have double jump yet. I can't go up there. Oh, uh, well. But yeah, you just talk to this dude and you can get your first upgrade for 150 money and that's it. Uh, everything after that will require a weapon crystal, which obviously would take way too long to get in addition to getting the money also taking way too long. Yeah, so this room is like just in the way, uh, or I guess just barely out of the way enough that it is no problem to route in. And it's just, you know, free extra damage makes boss fights faster and safer. Basically, for like a minute of time loss, you can do increase your damage by 50%. Additionally, uh, what increases damage is we're going to grab a augment here in this room called Wave Blaster. You may notice the door above where Sam just passed is... It's got like a little green glow on it. And this enemy we're fighting here also has a green glow. So if we beat this enemy, the door opens. Wave Blaster uh, basically adds a bunch of like wavy shotgun looking particles to your gun. Um, why are you going for the money? Because uh, I still need to, in case I die and still need to get one of my things back. Uh, so I don't know okay. it yet. Gotcha, gotcha. Good point. Um... Yeah. So this sort of turns our gun into a shotgun, and each one of these little wavy particles that comes out is, in and of itself, also its own blast shot. So we have four extra beams coming out of our gun, and our damage is now substantially higher for it. Uh, yeah, this platform di dictates the entire room, unfortunately. Yeah, it's such a long cycle platform. Really unfortunate, but happens yeah all right so Still going for. now i need to figure out uh you know do i just go back and get the double jump now or do i do uh, a little fancy stuff and get it later i'm just gonna go get it now i'd say get it now yes yeah, with your health core there yeah so basically in an old route we would used to we did actually used to get it later in the run but that's partially because of we us getting a, another upgrade that we don't need anymore that you know, I can talk about more when it's relevant. Also, this guy's not being nice to me, so I'm just going to kill him. Yeah. Okay, that guy also uh. wasn't nice to me. <laughs> oh. This is, this is what happens when you die when you're not supposed to. Things get a little out of hand. I still have yeah. some money. I'm just going to... Actually, no. I'm going to need that money when I death warp after getting the upgrade, so... Little unfortunate, but you know, this game is very early on, so our routing is currently pretty strict with what we have. We don't have like a lot of backups, but Sam's doing a, a fine job here of routing in where to go, just having to play it a little safe here. Yes. 
There's the health core, so now I'm good. Yeah, and a, a fun little bonus that when you pick up a health, a health core that you dropped, it gives you an extra piece of temporary health. Uh, so that the fact that I got hit right there means I don't have to heal. Yeah. Because I, got, I used the temporary health. So it's a really nice trade-off. If you want to pay for the health core and just get it back right away, you can, but you're incentivized to pick it up, partly because it saves money and partly because it then gives you extra health. Say so making good use of super bomb bounces here to get up this, through this room, as long as the right, mosquitoes don't bore you. And now I'm back in the room that uh, was not too kind to me before. There we go. Oh, still not kind to me. All right. Oh. Let me get some spark blood real quick before going back up. So yeah, the, up at the top left corner of this room is a double jump upgrade. Come on, that guy is just not cooperating. Oh. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now, there might be some concerns that, you know, this is a yeah, game that's that... fine, but it's still fine. That's fine. Oh, 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 I do need this upgrade for the run, so I can't skip it, unfortunately. Yeah. So I do need to just deal with this. Yeah, th that room is just like a it is a huge pain. It is a gigantic pain to deal with. Yeah, It is one of the most annoying rooms in the entire run. And if I can get past this, there's only like one other annoying room in the run. That's not <laughs> true. But there's like one more stretch of annoying rooms. <laughs> yeah, well, one more section that, that is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Happens to the best of us, but uh, I, I I think it is worth noting that some people may be expressing concerns. Uh, Sam, th this is a game that seems to be taking place uh, not exactly on our planet. In fact, it might be happening out in the void of, uh, what what do you call it? Starts, starts with an S and it... Uh, star. Star, something like that. Um, and it seems like there's like a sort of large scale fight happening here. I uh, can't put my word. Uh, thank or... Thankfully, it's more of a small scale fight. It's not a full out war. Oh, uh, OK, OK, good. Because there there might have been some concern. There, there might have been a little bit of concern that this might fall under uh, yes. illegal terms. Uh, don't worry. This is more of at most like a skirmish. Fantastic. It is a, a space skirmish, if you will. Awesome. All right, so we should be in the clear. And a temporary help okay. should... Okay. Yeah, damage tanking. <laughs> okay, we're good. Ada, man, there you go. My guy. So yeah, if uh, the enemies just cooperated the first time, that would have ha been what I did like five minutes ago. <laughs> Sometimes it can be that easy. Sometimes they just go, nah. It's also like the, the super balance is not the easiest thing it is consistent it is super consistent but it is a tight series of inputs especially when you're also having to rely on the bomb being below you which is an extra bit of setup so yeah, on top of is, just you know pressure of chaining them back to back it is very easy to accidentally hit it to jump too early and so you just get the normal height from a bomb bounce yeah like the the input for getting the super bounce is way later than you think it is it's also a problem where uh, you can't do a super bounce from the air, but you can do a bomb bounce from the air. So that's why sometimes I don't do any uh, super bounces. That's because I'm chaining bomb bounces without having to land, which is marginally faster in certain circumstances. And that's ideally that's how I do the room with the double jump is just chain bomb bounces. But uh, that requires the enemies to be in the right spots. And if they're not, I just got to improvise. Yeah, and those guys in particular are also just very, uh, as you could tell, their attacks place down like a bunch of brambles, so they just make it so you can't land there either, which is like the worst possible setup for trying to schmoove through a room like that. Either way, we're now entering the mines. Welcome to jail. Yeah, the mines are, uh, when I was like, I lied, there's multiple annoying rooms, That's it's here. <laughs> It's here. It's the mines. It's always the mines. The yeah, mines. so uh, 
real quick, we did pick up a story-related thing, uh, Quirk. Yes. Uh, she's an AI that we need to progress through the game and activate the subsystems. That's basically the gist of it. Yeah, basically just story check right there. That uh, giant door we ran past in that laboratory-looking room is uh, the final boss door. Yes. So we'll be coming back there later. But this room right here has these teleporting dudes that shoot <laughs> projectiles at us. Uh, they're fun, both because they're annoying to deal with and also because we need them to do something for us. Uh, you see that switch? Uh, they need to hit it. Their projectiles, for some reason, can hit that switch, and we need to go in there to sequence break the game. And they just teleport at random. So yes. we sit in this corner and pray that they teleport into that switch. In oh, the other one's close. In previous iterations of the game, it was actually possible to sort of shove a bomb into the corner and have that hit. I need to. I'm at one health. I'm going to go to. Yeah, the you need to bail. <laughs> I was getting scared there. Uh, so there's a checkpoint like right next door. Thankfully. Thankfully, when you do a room transition, it clears out the teleporting dudes. So. Uh, I can do that, and then I have to go back up and bait them again, but I'll at least have full health. Mm. Also, okay. uh, I forgot to equip Wave Blaster, so I'm doing that now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would Wave be getting blasters. that checkpoint uh, regardless, like, as a safety checkpoint, because, like, I need it for an upcoming thing. It's not just regarding these dudes, but I got it a little early because they were being annoying. Yeah, that's a, a big thing with routing currently is there's a lot to do with like, oh, well, it could be faster if we just took like only one or two checkpoints ever to teleport to. But Finally. then if you die. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes this happens like literally instantly and sometimes it takes that long. It's the, the vibe check. It's the RNG vibe check. Nobody likes it. Meanwhile. Speaking another trick checks. that another vibe check trick so while sam's doing this uh this okay. is a room you're meant to go through the other way when we have the next upgrade which is a wall climb wall jump Mega Man x style however uh bombs in this game will propel you away from them when they explode so even if you don't bounce into them if you're to like put a bomb below you and then jump as it goes off it will propel you up if you have it against a wall and you're jumping and you're above it, it propels you up. So what happens if we drop down and then throw a bomb in front of us and use the little double jump there, well done, uh, to go up? There we go. It works out. Uh, you might think, well, what about the bomb timer? Well, if we're paused, the bomb timer just progresses anyways. And then as soon as we on pause, it immediately explodes. So we drop, shoot a bomb, dash into it, pause. And then as we on pause, we use the double jump to swoosh on up. There we go. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that there's an upgrade that we skipped now. Uh, that was an augment that let us manually detonate the bombs. So we used to use that to do that trick. And then we found out the bomb timer progresses while you're paused. And, you know, you can just do it manually without that augment, which saves time. Really is that shrimple. Yeah, second try on mind skip is humongous. Well done. Especially since the first try was basically not even a try because I went in with two health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was doing uh, runs last night and none of them had good mind skip, so I'm glad it at least went quickly. It is very, if mind skip doesn't want to cooperate, it is very easy to lose a lot of time to it. Yeah, it's probably the, the biggest spot to lose time in the entire run. Um, right now, though, going up against the drill, living drill, it's uh, you'll notice the boss is basically already done. Because <laughs> the one damage upgrade plus wave blaster is absolutely huge. And on top of that, I'm still using bomb to get a little extra chip damage in there. Okay, but now we get the climb upgrade. It lets you climb. It lets you climb. It's the second to last upgrade we get, but the last one that really matters movement wise. And this is why I took the checkpoint right before the boss, so I can just go straight back up here. 
All right. So yeah, unfortunately, the mines has two bosses, so we're not even done here yet. It's the only area in this run that we have to fight all multiple bosses in. Yeah, it's it's part of why it's jail because getting through mine skip in that one boss was just like the first half. Now we gotta navigate even more. Yes, thankfully none of these areas are as bad as the mine skip and the rooms before it. But that doesn't mean they're free. Using the bomb there to hit a switch off screen, avoiding both the flying guy and a robot hiding in the room. Those flying guys are obnoxious. They are the only enemy in the game that does two damage on their hits for some reason. And they have giant red orbs that will track you to the ends of the earth. Also, there was a, a battle arena we were supposed to do, but uh, you can just go through that gap and just go up here early. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like little battle arenas throughout the game that uh, we end up skipping either through that or through force respawn, as you'll see. But Or, or room... even through uh, the platforms with bombs earlier. Yeah, like this room, uh, this set of rooms is a really, really awesome demonstration of what you can do with super bounces and super bomb bounces. Up the shaft with the super bomb bounce first try. That's fantastic. Love to see it. And now we have the next boss. This is Cerebellum. It's a giant floating head. It's a giant dork in a bay of blade. He is going to try to run you down, shoot him. He is very obnoxious. He, <laughs> You need to shoot him in this giant room. He'll kind of just go wherever he wants. Oh yeah, no, if, like, if you wail on him too much, he just stops going near you for a couple seconds and you just gotta chase him down. Which is very annoying. Shame Thankfully, to... uh, when he's away from you, it makes you able to heal easily, so that's the one consolation prize. Yeah, he's not like a very difficult boss per se, but he is a, a uh, hard to do quickly boss. Yeah, he's a time sink if you're not careful, but thankfully it's not the hardest boss to do without dying. Hmm. There is actually a checkpoint not far from his room that I know used to take Sam, but anymore now, like the, the, the danger previously was the room to Cerebellum and not Cerebellum himself. Yeah. But because of uh, a reroute, I do a slightly different checkpoint thing with the... Uh, mines here where instead of getting basically no checkpoints and warping back to that first one I got before mine skip and then leaving manually uh getting a ch the checkpoint before the drill boss and then going back to it so that I don't have to descend this tower actually saves a little bit of time even though I have to go back through uh the room where I did mine skip hmm. like a five second difference it's not much but it also makes this section way easier, where if I were to die to Cerebellum, I don't go all the way back before Mind Skip. There we go. Well done. So Cerebellum himself does not drop any upgrade. Rather, you'll notice there were some doors on the side of the arena. Uh, doors that look like that throughout the map are now accessible, including one here in the mines we're about to come up to. Yes. Also, uh, we can go to some sp spots we're not supposed to, and that's why we have double jump. That is, because normally yep. you're supposed to have a super dash ability, kind of like the crystal dash from Hollow Knight. Uh, but we don't have that because it's slow and requires an extra boss fight. An extra boss fight that is on the exact opposite side of the world from here, even. Yes. But here's Fantastic one of those doors burgers. that we mentioned. That room right there that Sam just went through is, t oh, it's so hard. It is so hard to do casually. It's so hard to do without the strats we have. And ever since combining everything we got together, it's become so much nicer. So it's very satisfying seeing <laughs> quick, uh, precise movement through there. Oh yeah, no. But now right. we have the actual subsystems. Uh, in order to reactivate the subsystems, you have, there's a bunch of switches in the room and you have to go activate them all so they're all active at the same time. Yeah, so that's what we're doing one. here. They have a small timer on them. And so just pop your way back and forth with our movement tech. It is no problem at all. 
So you might have noticed, oh, there's a suspicious room right before that subsystem. I wonder if there's going to be a fight there. <laughs> we uh, will never correct. know. You're correct. There is a fight there, but we don't do it because we force respawn. Because <laughs> it only activates on the way back. And it's and not at all, like, required. As intended. <laughs> okay. See, it's a lot easier when you're not trying to sequence the sequence break the game. Yeah, it's crazy how doing it the intended way is easier. I think we should look at doing that more. Oh, this fire fly oh. is getting in my way. Gonna do that. Yeah, those guys are weirdly tanky. Yep, and they're also very annoying because the fire trail does damage. So just because you avoid the fly itself, they can still just get in the way. All right. But now we are leaving the mines and moving on to the, the next section of the game. So thankfully, Freedom. there's not actually that much left in the run that is like, quote unquote, difficult. It's not easy, obviously, but like there's nothing nearly as bad as the mines for the rest of the run, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, you've passed the vibe check. Yeah, really, the only thing left that poses a threat is the final boss. Which is still very much a threat, but... Yes. That That's at but, the very end, and there's a checkpoint right before worst-case scenario. Yes. All right, those guys were kind of not in a good position, so I couldn't Ooh. get over them easily. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's that's something you only really uh, appreciate once you start doing speedruns of this game at a higher level. Uh, enemy RNG can very easily matter a lot more than you'd think. Because if the enemies are just deciding to be in an inconvenient position, you can't do anything about it. You just gotta wait for them to move or kill them. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I accidentally double jumped and died. Oh. That's fine. In the meantime, this takes a, gives us a moment to go. Hey, look, it's me. That, you see that little that little Robo Man? It's me. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Since I was back over there, I might as well take the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was a an echo left by me uh, from the Kickstarter backer campaign. <laughs> Thank you. It's fu it's funny how that's like one of the only ones we see in the any percent run. Yeah, like, seriously. Even, we don't even walk past any of the other ones. I don't think so, no. All right, grab this checkpoint. We're going to be using that checkpoint a lot and for the entirety of the rest of the run as our uh, main focal uh, hub point. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, these trams we're walking past here are functional. Uh, in fact, there are four points of transit from those trains and... Every time you go into a room where one is active, you have the point unlocked. So we'll be using them a couple times throughout here on top of just death warping on top of there being another one of those warp points uh, in that same room, similar to what we saw earlier. For now, okay, we right. move on actually, to the I, basin. I actually made it through that room without voiding out for once. I almost yeah. always accidentally void out there. <laughs> You have the worst time with those little bats that spew the, the green globs, yeah. I swear. All right, there's a little switch that we're not supposed to hit yet that we can hit through the wall with the bomb. Just that simple saves going all the way up the side of that room, all the way to the side. A lot of movement. Yeah, so basically the intended way of going through the basins here is you're supposed to go all the way to the right uh, hit a uh, terminal that opens up the water valves that'll like uh, let you access a bunch of pathways that you wouldn't be other able to otherwise. And then you can use that to go find the boss and the subsystem here. But uh, there is a path where if you go way around to the left here, uh, you can instead uh, just, you know, go straight to where the boss is without having to access that terminal at all. Exactly. So they're actually used to, we'll have to go through a bit of a water pipe here in a moment. And that water pipe used to have a uh, valve in the way that would have to be opened using said terminal. However, 
there was a rather consistent soft block that happened there due to just an oversight in design. So the valve was deleted and turns out that is a perfect route for us. Yes. So yeah, uh, coming up right here, uh, let me get some spark wood real quick. Okay. But yeah, coming up, oh, one of them went in the water, I didn't notice that. Yeah, this, this room has a... Uh, some water that flows up and so the water will flow up into uh the where the uh, lock was and then you would not be able to go up and you'd fall back down into where the water flows and you can't go anywhere because you're just stuck between those two rooms exactly so normally if you had the water up by using the terminal in this room the previous room then like those little closing doors you wouldn't be able to get through them in time without using either a you know without using a special ability that we get here in a moment or a bit of special tech with a bomb but because the water is down we can just walk through and we get to see bartholomew here yes the this is uh what i like to call the easiest boss on the run because in between every single uh, attack you can just heal yeah so there's just... literally no risk of dying <laughs> he just walks into you just jumps in front of you you just smack him with the wave blaster plus the augments we have we get so much spark blood every time he goes past that there's you, you can just heal and it's that easy yeah and he's also like a 30 second fight <laughs> thank you bartholomew love that guy all right now we can finally swim we learned yeah. how all right so this is, this is an upgrade that's basically just used here <laughs> But yeah, the, basically the way the swim works is it lets you dash underwater, is, is what it essentially does. Uh, we're going to see it in a second, because falling through that room with the bounce is way faster than swimming, even with the upgrade. But yeah, yes. once I uh, activate the valve in this room, using this terminal, we get to see swimming. Whoops. Well, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch of those Mega Man blocks in there and that can void you out if you're not careful. Yeah, so ideally I would have made that first cycle. But yeah, this is swimming. Uh, basically, you dash and it has like a small cooldown before you can dash again. But if you hold A, which would which lets you like jump up through uh, the water, like in a basic swimming pattern, uh, each time you do that, it resets the dash. And so you can just constantly dash by spamming the trigger. Also, yeah, this so, we were, uh, we're not doing as intended. No, yeah, so you notice we kind of just jump up there. Uh, so the swim upgrade actually has another function where if you enter water at a fast enough speed, usually by falling, you enter a sort of shine spark state. And while you're in that shine spark state, if you slow down too much, if you stop, if you land out of water, uh, if you bump into a wall, you'll leave it. But while you're in it, you move super, super, super fast and can rock it out of water. Additionally, there are also pink crystals throughout the game that when you touch them uh, while in Shine Spark State, that's how you break them. There used to be those pink crystals in that room, but nobody really could figure out how the Shine Spark State worked without being told. So they ended up being removed. But the ideal is you would jump up real high, fall into the water, and then that enter the Shine Spark State. You go across the loop in a U shape repeat that to gain momentum. It's a really cool mechanic, just not, sadly not used to great effect there. Yeah, it's like casually, I did not know how to do that room. And then even once I was told how to do the room, I still almost couldn't do it. Same. Because I, <laughs> now I, now that I actually like know how it works and everything, I'd be able to do it a lot easier, but that's obviously way faster and easier to just use a super bomb bounce. All right, but now we have to go do another story check now that we've done two subsystems. Uh, basically, what happened was we did two subsystems and then Quirk leaves us for reasons undisclosed. And so we have to go figure out a way to reactivate the third subsystem without her. So we have to go to the labs here. We have to go to the room of giant, giant bouncy guys and turrets and make our way through a bit of a, a bit of a health check at times. This place is filled with a lot of things jumping at you and shooting at you, so. I think this spot right here through. is safe, and so I can heal real quick. 
But yeah, this is the other reason you have to kill Cerebellum is because there's doors there. That you would not be able to open otherwise. But as we, uh, you know, make our way up this room here, uh, the objective is right up here. We have to go sit in a chair because we're tired. So we're a little sleepy. And by doing this, Moon and now has the ability to put herself into the mainframe. Yeah, so basically the gist of what's actually happening is, uh, it turns out that we crash landed on this planet, we're not actually alive, and we're actually, like, uploaded into this body here. And so because we're not actually a person, we can just go straight into the network ourselves. And there you go. And in that previous room, you'll notice uh, Sam just did a super bomb bounce, flew way off screen, then landed the exit. So normally you're supposed to, like, get close to the platforms and then they appear. And so it's a bit of a slow platforming section. No, nah, just jump to the end. Yep. Yeah, it's like when we have all of these movement options, uh, you know, basic platforming is a lot different. Hmm. All right. But now this is why we activated the fast travel stations, because the third subsystem uh, is in the Arboretum, which is right up here above the overgrowth, which uh, you might have noticed. I did actually pass through the Arboretum briefly earlier when I was trying to get to the double jump. Uh, yeah. But now we actually have to traverse it all the way. Now we should move on through. And this is another area where you were probably more than likely meant to have the sort of crystal, again, compared to Hollow Knight, the, the crystal dash. Um, but with a mix of the dash, normal dash, plus uh, the sort of double jump we have, it just works really well regardless. Well, this is also the area where you get the super dash, so makes sense that they might want you to have it here. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say, even without double jump, it is possible to get to this subsystem, but it's obviously uh, not as easy. But yeah, right here, we go through a room with a suspiciously sh arena shaped uh, spot right there. <laughs> Luckily, uh, no one of the <laughs> shortest paths to a uh, subsystem as oh, yeah, well no, this, for being the last one. It's very nice that this one is so direct when you have the fast travel station like that. Hmm. All right, just okay. go ahead and hit all three of these switches and we're good. And there we go. Ah, but if you thought that was easy, ah, uh, there's more. Don't worry. No, no. So yeah, now we have to go in this uh, network area and destroy three like floating yellow dudes, and that'll unlock the path out of here. Or do uh, we? Uh, yeah, the path out of here is always open. So even without those platforms, we can just do that. See ya. <laughs> So yeah, normally breaking them would, or killing those three guys would, you know, spawn the platforms out, but uh, nah. And then there's a second section, which we're supposed to do, but what if we just forced respawn and left? So yeah, we do neither of those as intended. And just like that, we're on our way to the final boss. <laughs> it's that easy. No, cl no clue why that only works on the, the second half of that little dream computer sequence, but it do. All I know is that it does work, so we're going to use it. <laughs> All right, so this room right here is kind of annoying. Uh, but if you go fast enough, thankfully, the guys that spawn in uh, don't hit you. So it's not too bad. But yeah, uh, you know what? I'm going to grab the checkpoint just in case. Yeah, I've, ar I've already died enough in this run. Normally in a PB attempt, I would just skip this checkpoint because it's like 10 seconds. That If I die to the final boss, it doesn't matter if I lose 10 seconds anyway. Yeah. But marathon run, let's take the marathon safety. Yes, it takes like 30 seconds to get back, so it's not that big a deal anyway, but yeah. Uh, this room, I can chain uh, slides and super bounces to get through it much quicker. Very satisfying when I nail all of them. Mm. All right, Almost. But here's our mom. Save uh, her. Yes, so we have to go try and save our mom, so we have to defeat the evil AI. And this is the final boss, Hive. There he is, little little curvy looking guy. Very uh, difficult from a casual playthrough, but his first phase is actually pretty easy once you know what's the, happening. The, the only hard part about the first phase is not making taking it out to be as enough of a joke so that you don't accidentally finish it without full health. 
Yeah. Do you want to go into the second phase up ahead here with full health if you can? You will need it. Yes. Yeah, because the second phase basically has one attack that is 100% safe to heal during. And <laughs> it doesn't do it that often, so you have to just not get hit if possible. Yeah. Shockingly, the best strategy for uh, a video game. Just just don't get hit. It's that easy. <laughs> but yeah, this first boss uh, phase here is, like we said, not that hard. It has very predictable attacks. They're easy to dodge. It just teleports around a lot, which is a little annoying. But that's all it is for phase one. So skip a cutscene and it grows legs. Have you ever seen Deltarune? Like, I uh, actually. I've oh. never played Deltarune. Shame. There's a boss in that game that's just like a checker piece, and it powers up, and when it does, it just grows a giant pair of legs, and that's all I can think of when I see this guy. Uh, just... my, I, for me, I just think of, uh, like, I don't know why, but I, SpongeBob comes to mind. I don't remember what episode somebody grows <laughs> legs in, but it comes to mind. Kind of like, kind of like the, the the anchor arms almost. Yeah, like the anchor arms, or like Patrick during the Goofy Goober Rock song. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yes, final boss got like uh, three or four moves. Nothing too crazy, but it's just all very, very, very fast. It, it's yeah. very overwhelming. Yeah, it's very easy to dodge the attacks once you know all of them but it's still very easy to accidentally get hit by one here and there. All right, this is this marks the second half of phase two where he does that attack and then nothing changes. He just floats around a little bit. Yeah, but the, that attack is actually really nice because you can wail on him during it and just get a lot of free damage. All right, and he should be dying. Okay, there we go. And time is coming up in a moment. And after I skip the last cutscene, time. GG, there we go. Uh, that looked like a 55 flat to me, but... Yeah, it was it was very close. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't by... address it at all during the run, but the game has an in-game speedrun timer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the timer at the top of the screen the whole time. We use we use that for uh, leaderboard timing. Yeah. Uh, but... There we go. So, honestly, not bad. Despite, uh, despite a bit of a meltdown there in the middle, that came out really well. Yeah, that was uh, about seven minutes behind my pb considering how much time i spent dying in that one section that's not too bad <laughs> yeah i would say that was really good uh yeah so when we finish up we normally go back in the save file see what the final time is it'll be paused on the the finish time but that's that uh you'll uh, but, see some but very first some names oh man oh ooh, th those are some cool names going by there oh any percent what could it mean hmm yeah, during the, the, the Kickstarter, there was a speedrunning contest for the demo that we both took part in. Yeah. But here's all the other Kickstarter backers, which we are also in these lists somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in there. But yeah, that's I need you that, all to... uh, Rebel Transmute Any Percent. Yeah, there we go. I think that was a pretty good showcase. Uh, well done, GG's to you, Sam. That was very well done. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, despite the meltdown, things went smoothly for the rest of the run. Mm. I think you showed off everything that could be there to show. You did good backups. All the strats were done very well. I like said 54 on the, the, the file select with yeah. 55 in game. Because, specifically because it doesn't count the time in the pause menu, but the speed run the timer does. Oh, uh, OK. But yeah, uh, before we, uh, you know, yap on for too long, might as well Give some shout outs. Uh, shout out to the rest of the small community for this game. Uh, most of the stuff in this run, while I uh, was one of the people who like mainly routed things out, I was not the one who found almost any of the tricks on the run. So shout out to Anna Machine, uh, Lily. Uh, those two are some of the people that found most of the stuff we do in this run. Yeah. Uh, huge shouts to them. Uh, Anna Machine has a lot of videos on YouTube that go over a lot of the details. Lily is still going through the game every now and then, finding little things here and there. Uh, Sam is still pushing runs as is. Yeah, it's a it's a fun little game. I would rec I would recommend casually. Would recommend as a speed run. Uh, hmm. We do have a, we do have a Discord if this caught anybody's interest. 
and it wants yeah. to try out the game or at least see what's going on in the world of speedrunning. Exactly. Go check the game out on speedrun.com. Link to the Discord there. We're more than happy to have you. More than happy to have people learn the run. It's a super fun run. And if uh, you want to see more of me, either with this game or another game, uh, you can find me on my Twitch, you know, twitch.tv slash IllegallySam. Definitely be sure to go follow Sam if you want to find any more of me for whatever reason. I do a mix of speedrunning casual stuff on twitch.tv forward slash snapkick. Go follow Sam, though. Or both of us. Whatever uh, strikes your fancy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I think that's all I've got. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thanks to No Glitches a lot for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been fun.